Hey, Jason from Theme Punch here. So today we're going to talk about how you can use the standalone editor to add the sliders that you create to your websites. So there are a few different options and I'll just go through all of them and you can choose which one is best for your project. So the first option is to export the slider for HTML usage. And basically what that means is it exports all of the JavaScript files, CSS files, and markup to a zip file that you can then port over to and integrate with your website. So the first thing to do for that is to check in the global settings, make sure that the enable markup export option is set to on. And then if you reload the page, you should have this option here, export to HTML. So I'm going to go ahead and click that and then it will save to a folder on my site. And here's that folder. So if I just extract that, you can see all of the files and folders are already inside the extracted folder here. So I can just copy these over to my website. Now let's say that my website already has a folder named CSS or JS. And what I would do is I would just copy over the contents of these folders into my JS or CSS folder that already exists for my site. So if we just go ahead and view this, you can see here's our slider. And if we viewed the page's source, we can see all of the markup. It's all in here. So for the next option, I want to show you how I've set up the editor inside my site here. So I'm working on a local host, but if this was your website, then this would be technically the root directory of your site. And so for me, I've just named it site, and then I have the editor and all its files inside a folder named RevSlider Standalone. And so eventually what I will do is add an index.php file here and that will be for my site's homepage. So this is the root directory right here. So if we head back over to the editor, and I go ahead and I click this arrow here, and then click Embed Slider. These are the three things that you need to embed the slider on a server running PHP. So I've set up an HTML skeleton here and what we can do is we can go ahead and save this inside our site's root directory. And I'm just going to name it index.php. So that will be our home page. So let's go ahead and copy this first line here. And we're going to paste that first line right at the very top of our page, above this doc type declaration. And then the second line here is going to be for our CSS and JavaScript files. So I'm going to paste that inside the head tag here. And then the third line is going to be for the sliders markup. So I'm going to go ahead and embed that inside the body element. So because this file is now at the site's root directory here, right at the very top, it's calling this embed.php file. But if we look at the root directory, we can see that file isn't here. It's actually inside this RevSlider standalone folder right here. So what we need to do is we need to copy that directory name and then go ahead and place it in front of embed.php with a forward slash and then go ahead and save it. And now we're ready to test this on the front end of our site. So I can go ahead and copy the editor URL here. And then just remove this part so we get the root directory and the slider should load now. And here it is. Okay, so this example here is really the same exact example as this embed example.php here. But the reason why I set it up in a different file is I wanted to walk through the process 
of copying over these three lines here so you can see what they are and what they do. But if you just wanted to use the embed example.php here, you could just go ahead and update the directory here, update the sliders alias, which in our case is classic slider. And then of course, save that to your site's root directory, rename it to whatever file name you wanted to. And it's essentially the same as this setup right here. So inside the rev slider standalone directory, in addition to embed example, we also have embed example.js. So let's go ahead and take a look at that. This is actually the third way that you can add your sliders to your web pages. So in this example, it already has all of the CSS and JavaScript files added. And this is just kind of a dynamic way of adding the slider to your site. And this is a PHP file. So what we need to do for this is we need to update the URLs for the CSS and JavaScript files and also the alias. So for the URLs, web slider public assets, these are actually inside this folder here. But because we're going to add this to our site's root directory, we have to go ahead and copy this directory name and place it in front of all these files similar to what we did for the other example. So I'm going to go ahead and do that for all of these files here. And then lastly, I'm going to copy the alias. And just so you know, another way you can get your sliders alias is inside the settings. It would be right here. So the alias is going to go in this data alias. Let's go ahead and save this to our site's root directory. We can save it as index2. And now if we test that on the front end of our site, we should see our slider again. And here it is. So these are the three ways that you can add the slider to your website. I hope this was helpful and good luck with your project.